To ensure the continuation of their race, the Amazons of Themyscira engage in a ritualistic process. They raid ships on the high seas, seeking men to mate with. Once the act is complete, the Amazons kill the men and dispose of their bodies by casting them into the sea. They do this to avoid any ties to marriage or long-term relationships, as their society remains independent and isolated from the outside world. After returning victoriously to Paradise Island, the Amazons wait for the inevitable consequences of these unions. Nine months later, those who give birth to daughters celebrate the continuation of their lineage. However, when male children are born, there is no celebration. Feeling compassion for the male children, who were viewed as failures by the Amazons, the Greek god Hephaestus stepped in. He struck a deal with the Amazons. In exchange for weapons crafted by him, Hephaestus would take the boys, sparing them from a grim fate. These sons of Themyscira were sent to Hephaestus' forge inside Mount Etna, Italy, where they would work for him. When Wonder Woman discovered this arrangement, she was deeply troubled. Seeing her brothers being used in Hephaestus' forge, she attempted to free them. However, to her surprise, the sons asked her to stop, explaining that Hephaestus had actually saved their lives. Without him, they would have been thrown into the sea, unwanted and unloved, much like how Hera had cruelly discarded Hephaestus himself. The god of the forge had not only spared them, but also raised them with care and purpose. In his forge, the sons had become skilled artists, and they were content with their lives under Hephaestus' guidance. This revelation helped Diana understand that she had misjudged Hephaestus. He had given the sons of Themyscira a chance to live meaningful lives when no one else would. Diana, hoping to bridge the gap between the sons of Themyscira and their Amazon mothers and sisters, attempted to create a settlement for the men on Paradise Island. Her goal was to foster unity and bring the two sides closer together. However, despite her best efforts, tensions between the sons and the Amazons only grew. The Amazons, particularly those in the capital of Themyscira, were resistant to the idea of integrating the men into their society. Relations became increasingly strained, with many Amazons still holding on to old prejudices. Eventually, Themyscira made the decision to close its gates to the sons entirely, isolating them from their homeland and preventing any further contact. Diana's dream of reconciliation between the two groups seemed more distant than ever, as the Amazon's hostility overshadowed her hopes for peace. While Diana was away from Themyscira, engaged in missions with the Justice League, a dark plot unfolded on the island. Donna Troy, created by the Amazon sorceress Dorino to serve as a replacement for Queen Diana in her absence, sought to restore what she believed to be the true Amazon way. She resented the presence of men on the island and viewed them as a stain on Themyscira's purity. Rallying a group of Amazons who shared her radical views, Donna urged them to take back the island and eliminate the sons of Themyscira. In a brutal and calculated attack, Donna and her followers launched a nighttime assault on the men's settlement. Catching the sons off guard, the Amazons showed no mercy, killing them all by the sword in cold blood. The massacre was swift and devastating, with the men slaughtered simply for existing in a place where they were no longer welcome. By the time morning arrived, the sons of Themyscira had been wiped out, their lives taken in a senseless act of violence. Upon Diana's return to Themyscira, she was met with the horrifying aftermath of the massacre. The bodies of her brothers, the sons of Themyscira, lay lifeless across the island. Overcome with grief, Diana wept among the corpses, unable to comprehend the senseless violence that had occurred in her absence. Her heart broke for the brothers she had fought so hard to protect and for the shattered hope of unity between them and the Amazons. Dessa, one of Diana's closest friends and a fellow Amazon, approached her with sorrow in her eyes. She explained to Diana that there had been no time to stop the slaughter. Donna Troy and the group of 20 Amazons had attacked swiftly under the cover of night, and by the time the fires were spotted, it was already too late. The massacre had been a brutal and calculated act, leaving no survivors. Dessa spoke with regret, acknowledging that while many Amazons may not have agreed with sharing their homeland with men, 
There was a deeper reason behind Queen Hippolyta's decision to trade their sons to Hephaestus. We are warriors, Diana, not murderers, Dessa reminded her, speaking of the values that had once defined their people. With tears streaming down her face, Diana replied, her voice heavy with sorrow, not everyone, Dessa. The betrayal of Donna and the other Amazons had cut deep, and the bloodshed had forever altered the landscape of Themyscira. After an intense and emotionally charged battle, Diana ultimately defeated Donna Troy, putting an end to the bloody conflict. Despite their shared history and once closed bond, Diana had no choice but to stop Donna's brutal actions and restore peace to Themyscira. With the battle over, the Amazons came together to honor the fallen sons of Themyscira with a proper Amazon funeral, performing ancient rites to give their brothers the respect they deserved in death. In the aftermath of the tragedy, a solemn decision was made. Never again would a male child be torn from his family and exiled from his homeland. The island would no longer bear the shame of such a practice, and a new era of compassion and unity was promised for the future of Themyscira. As for Donna Troy, the punishment for her crime was severe. She was banished from Paradise Island forever, her actions deemed unforgivable. She was taken to the dungeon of Mount Olympus, a place of imprisonment for those who had committed the gravest offenses. There, she would remain isolated from the world she once sought to protect. The other Amazons who had participated in the massacre were not spared either. Those with blood on their hands were sentenced to serve under Hephaestus, just as the sons had done before them. They would work in his forge, their toil serving as atonement for the atrocities they had committed. In the smelter, they would face the weight of their actions, forging weapons and facing the consequences of their betrayal. Later on, Wonder Woman uncovers that a man named Anastasios had survived the brutal massacre, having hidden deep in the jungles of Paradise Island to escape the bloodshed. When Diana eventually found him, she was horrified by the extent of his injuries. Anastasios had lost an arm, suffered severe head trauma, bore multiple bruises and burns, had lost an eye, and his remaining wounds were crudely patched together with makeshift bandages. In his weakened state, Anastasios lashed out at Diana, yelling at her for the atrocities committed against him and the other man. He bitterly declared that if he had known what was to come, he would have chosen to end his life rather than endure the massacre's aftermath. His words and demeanor revealed a deep despair, suggesting that he still wished for death, unable to find peace in the face of the horrors he had survived. Diana was left to grapple with the reality of the damage done, both physical and emotional and how the events on Paradise Island had broken not only the bonds between the Amazons and their brothers, but the very spirit of the survivors like Anastasios. It's important for you to know that this is just one version of how the Amazons reproduce. In this video, we focused on the version from the New 52. And that's the video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to watch more videos that will appear on the screen right now. See you later.